Oh, sure. Is the yeah. middle light burned out up there? Pardon me? I'm wondering if the middle, or maybe there isn't a middle light. It doesn't look like they, there's a lot of light over Maggie, the middle so of the light. You want some back there? Oh, yeah. No. No. Yeah. Well, that's just burnt out. That made it work. No, I couldn't do it. That was better, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, I think that maybe burned out the screen. I guess it's just doesn't exist. I've got a bus Oh, I just have to connect to me. It's recorded right now, so it's not a problem. And I'll, I'll be checking the recording to get time to stamp when it starts, but it's easier. Um, and Yeah, I'm very happy to have uh, James Lewis, uh, the supporting speaker today. He's from the University of Alberta, and he has been to Ohio State many times, you know, but probably this is the first time that he's given the talk. Right? Yes, talk. I get paid. I don't start. <laughs> <laughs> so he's actually an expert on uh, horse theory, fertilizers, and, and other than that, he's a Great organizer of various workshops, conferences, and so forth. And in fact, we are going to organize one in the UK next, next semester. So he's going to talk on Kevin classes, success, and Indian indicators. Okay. Well, well, thanks, Roy, for your yeah. hospitality. Um, so, as a program talk, I should give some definitions first, some notation. There was a safe way, like. So, we're dealing with complex projections in space. And uh, if it was x <clears throat> and pn, it's going to be a smooth projective surface. So that means that locally in analytic coordinates, it looks like a two dimensional poly disk. Okay. Um, C of X is going to be the, oh, it amounts to the same thing as a meromorphic function field. Thing it's a rational one, and K2, the last, uh, well, one of the last things. This is four. K2 is C of X, is generated by by symbols. Call it FG, for F and G belong to C of X, um, subject to. Steinberg relations. So, as you probably know, F1, F2, G is equal to F1, G, F2, 
two G. F plus minus F is equal to one for F not equal to zero or one. Um, and uh, let's see, FG inverse is equal to GF of that. And uh, one more if I can fit it down here. F minus F is equal to one. Okay. And just one more bit of notation and I'll talk the problem. Um, so, D1 of x is going to be, let's call it a group of beta divisors. This is just the uh, free abelian group generated by irreducible curves in x. Okay? Um, and we have, uh, because x is a surface, that's C1 of x. And I should mention that one last bit of notation. C1 of x maps to H2 of xz. And uh, of course, my point rate duality is H upper 2 of xz. And modular torsion, this lies inside H2 of xz. And you have the Hodge decomposition. And the image of this is called the narrow Sebre group of X. And uh, modular torsion there in the narrow Sebre group lines of H11. Sorry. Okay, that's just basic stuff. So I can explain the problem. All right. So again, X is still the surface, and uh, we're going to look at a particular K group of X, and I'm not going to define this uh, in terms of K theory, but if you take a class along to this, okay, then you can think of C, a representative the form summation, j going from 1 to n, uh, f, j, e, j, where e, j's are curves, and f, j belongs to the function field, d, j, and it's not zero. And uh, the summation for j, by of f, j, dj is equal to zero x. Okay? Dividers are zeros minus poles. So James, the k1 in your title is covering with this k1? Huh? Oh, it's this. K1 classes, so it's basically like a k theory? That's yeah. Right. Yeah. There we go. Here. Okay. So, um, okay. So let's, uh, Let's look at the following situation. We say that class C is uh, decomposable um, if Fj belongs to C times for all J. Okay? And uh, All right. So C is said to be decomposable 
here. While you're the image of the tame symbol, Here, uh, K2 of C of X. I assume you've heard of that before. Uh, C does not keep the postal. Okay. So now this leads to a Betty cycle class map. So let uh, Notation here is for so right K two and decomposable right, one sorry one by one and two up here this would be the quotient group of the Okay, so, and I'm going to put X here, I should do that. So this is the object I'm interested in looking at, this object here, and I want to detect it. So now, okay. This all leads to a cycle class map. All right, um, let me just be confused for a sec. So the, the condition on the divisors summing to zero, what, what group is that in? So oh, A naught? A1. Oh. Yep. Oh, this is, I'm sorry, this goes down to K naught when you take the divisor. Oh, zero okay. Multiples. You don't know, like going fast because I had too much coffee today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's good coffee. <laughs> All right. So, now let me just be incredibly stupid. Um, what is this supposed to approximate? Like, is there something, something in this uh, cycle classes that this is approximating? Uh, yeah, this is. Um, you can think of another way of looking at it. Is this belongs to. Uh, C2 of X Great. cross a one simplex. Okay. Okay. And so it's approximating simplicial homology. Oh, 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 okay. Oh, this is okay. one of like, gotcha. This is like, this is one of these algebraic, one of these block That's right. Groups. Okay, great. Good. Look at a Betty cycloplast map. Um, K2, sorry, K1, it'd be proposable, bracket 2 of X, 2, I'll be just, I'll explain this map. This is, now what I'm going to put here is I'm going to insert twists in this business, but for now, you can just ignore the twist. It's just not being recorded. I want to put down everything accurately. Okay. This is one great well. So what is the map? And uh, I'll call the CL21. So you take, uh, you take a class, C, going to here, and again, C is equal to a summation over J, F, J, D, J. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider, you cannot, so F, J belongs to C of D, J times, but you could modify F, J. So it's a morphism from D, J to the extended complex plane, which is just P1, okay? 
So I'm going to put, so I'm going to put uh, gamma j to be fj inverse of minus infinity of this room. Right? And I'm going to put let gamma be the summation j plus one and the gamma j. Okay? These are actually, this is a one chain. So now the map is as follows. Uh, boundary gamma, in this case, is going to be the same thing as the summation over J, divisors of Fj, um, J, which is equal to zero on X. Okay? So, Let us tell us okay so the class C is associated with the class gamma which belongs to H1 of X C okay as I said before this is isomorphic to H3 of X all right. So we're going to let um, K1 and decomposable bracket 2 X naught equal kernel of CL2. Okay. In this case, if C belongs to the X naught, okay, then in this case, gamma is going to be boundary of some two chain state, okay? And uh, if boundary of theta prime is also equal to gamma, then that applies, that's the boundary of t minus c prime is equal to zero. So what we can do is factor out ambiguities here. And uh, so in this case, there exists a map I'll call it D lower score from K1 to the decomposables X not to dual space H20 of X modulo H2 of X. So it's a little bit too much of this inside here, so it's not going to be a smooth torus in general. Uh, yeah, more than a lattice. Pardon? Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll find that definition is decomposable. decomposable. Is for constant for any call coordinates. Yeah, you're only. I'm only restricting to the two zero forms. So they're going to pull back to zero on decomposables. I'm thinking that, to, uh, for example, if, if it's a function is only constant in well, the curve. You, if, what you do is you have a constant fj, you just exclude that. Okay, throw it out. Do the same thing. It's only when fj is a dominating map from ej to p1. It's a non-constant in any coordinate. Or you can pull back to minus infinity to zero, yeah. yeah. 
Okay. So, the usual map here. Omega here, you have the lower score of C acting on omega, would be the integral omega over zeta, module appearance. So we factor out the ambiguities and you get a map. Okay? So, conjecture. And I think this conjecture is quite old. It's 40 years in the making. Uh, when uh, Block and Griffiths, I think they conjectured this, this is what Spencer told me, uh, is that P bar is a jet. So, this conjecture lay dormant, as I said, for approximately 40 years. And uh, the lower star is called you know, the transcendental regulator. On, uh, one for two possible of x naught. So the full regulator full regulator on uh, a two, sorry, a one. Composable track two of x not okay. I call it p is given as false. So what we do is we look at um, page two of x. D transcendental is going to be H2 of X Z modulo and there are All right. So again, you work over C, module torsion, uh, this lies in H20 of X, tracks out what I'll call H11, transcendental of X, tracks out H02 of X. So we have this. So the mapping. Okay, so the mapping phi goes from this to what I call J of H2 transcendental. And now I have to start introducing twists, but I won't define them. Okay. Because I can give an explicit description of this by the work of Carlson. Uh, so this is going to be H T zero of X track sum H what one transcendental X dual modulo H two of X E. Okay, so 
Again, as usual, you take a four, omega, belonging to this, and you have that uh, E of like C acting on omega is going to be one over two pi i times the sum j going from one to n. We'll take the uh, principal branch of the log function. times omega no. minus 2 pi i integral omega over zeta. Okay. So that's the uh, full regulator on indecomposables. So, uh, so in the dimension of Jacobi of the channel hmm? or relative, so you, you define that from some trans frame module are relative. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Module from uh, lead module. So usually we should module from a relative, right? Uh, should we take the annihilator of No, no, this is it's a no. it's intermediate Jacobian. It's just the intermediate Jacobian. So that, that's got built into the definition. Yeah. But rank should Yeah. The rank is not a no, oh, this this is not going to be a lattice inside here. Oh, it's not going to be compact. Okay. All right. If that's what you're worried about. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay. So now observe. Yeah, actually, a question. So that's is that going to be where does that separate it? Is this separated? No, I'm sorry. Yeah, the quotient. When is it? You say it's not a lattice, but I well, mean, it's for example, it's, if all of the H11 were algebraic, then, then, then you would have that. Yes, it would be then, a compact. Yes, no. No, not. I mean, no, 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 it wouldn't be. Then uh, it would not be separated, right? I mean, right, right. Yeah. Right. So it's a question of whether. More than half of the H11 is you transcendental. It. That's right. That you're not assuming anything about that. No, in fact, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, observe. That if omega belongs to H two zero of x, then of course E acting on C applied to omega is the same thing as two bar up to sine. So we have this relationship, okay? So why should the conjecture be true? Well, first thing I have to do is explain Why the full of a full regulator should be injected. And the second statement, which is going to involve the various kinds of deformation theory, compare T bar to P. Okay. So, um, 
Okay. I'm just going to ask a random question. So you relate these to these intervals over these curves on surfaces. Have you ever drawn any of them? I'm just curious if they're anything cool. Oh, I forgot to do that. Um, yeah. Take a note. Okay. A little Good. rational curve. Okay. You synchronize it. What was R? Q post the key. Yeah. Okay. So this is D. You synchronize. Divisor of F on the tilde is equal to T minus Q. You can do that because it's rational. Okay. Divisor of F, D is equal to zero. All right? That's one picture. Now the picture is R minus Q, T minus Q. Hmm? Right. Divisor of F. So D tilde. So yeah, it, well, okay. F here belongs to the function field of D, mm -hmm. which is the same as the function field of D tilde. Oh, no, you just wrote an R for the, the, oh, the I points see. in the pre image. Yeah. Oh, R. Okay. Yeah. Right. It's almost like a rabbit coming out of a hat. But yeah. Oh, no, I was just wondering. I mean, I meant the real curves on the algebraic curves, because you're looking at the pre image from. Uh, I'm going to do zero. Is there, any, is, there any, are there anything, is there anything cool about them? I don't know. If you smoke something, I guess. All right. <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, yeah. I have a story I'll tell you about Ramesh and me in India. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we take a little bit of a detour on this. Uh, let's see. So I'm looking at bullet one. So now, on bullet one, we have it. Uh, there is a map, which I call D log two, which goes from K group of symbols to the function field. to what I call gamma H2 of C of X, C of 2. So you take a basic symbol here, you go to E log F, which E log G. Okay. This is torsion free, by the way. But what is this? Um, First of all, H2 of C of X to take the direct limit over U contain X, just the open. Of H2 U C of G. And uh, gamma All right. uh, gamma of uh, H two. X to two formally that's equal to all the category mixed cost structures of zero H two C of X to two. Okay, I like an infinite dimensional mixed cost structure. Um, I won't try and unravel this. Here, but Hodge theory creates a tool 
for which one can try and compute the image explicitly. I'm not so certain this would be too explicit to compute, but the basic thing is that this evolves from Hodge theory, mixed Hodge theory, and uh, the conjecture, second conjecture here, is what I call the Ilnar uh, Adelson. conjecture. Is that E log two is rejected? Okay. Every time my phone rings, I know it's another Trump message. <laughs> Is Milner because of K2? Pardon? The name Milner because of K2? Yes. Yeah. And just uh, something to add to this, the statement of this being surjective is equal to replace Z by Q. There's no difference. Okay. That falls from the uh, mercurius suslin here. Okay. So, so here, by myself and Rob Pajou, that E log two is rejective if and only if P is injected. Okay. Now of course what what you get from this is uh, a little more. The image, the image of P uh, is countable, so that falls from a result called uh, balance and rigidity, and uh, that's a conjecture of uh, Claire Vazin, that if it's injective, then K1 to x is zero. Conjecture implies that this is countable. Okay. So that's so now on uh, on bullet two. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to consider a smooth and proper family. Plus row. Um, I guess. All right. Or let's say. S is a poly disk. And for zero, applying to S, we have an X, which equals chi zero, is very general. So, um, very general would mean something where it's in the complement of a countable union of proper subvarieties, uh, analytic subvarieties in this, satisfying generic properties. All right. <coughs> okay. 
in this uh, the gamma h uh, is true, cxz is, uh, is it somehow related to call this on random spectrum? Oh, um, I haven't thought about it. I haven't thought about it, but so at some point you mentioned that there is a natural guy for one. You're referring to a paper they did with uh, Jean Louis. She did with Jean Louis on the counterexamples to the Hodgkin interval Hodgkin conjecture. Yes, something like that. Yeah, yeah, that's in a little bit of a different direction. There, they're looking at torsion, uh, non analytic torsion. So they're improving on the result of the TIA and the pressure brush and finding counter examples of Hodge, interval Hodge projection. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider the uh, retire. Or not. Well, kappa goes from a tangent space zero of s to h one of x. Looking at the sheaf of homomorphic vector fields on x, okay, and uh, this comes about. As follows. So you look at your family uh, S, a row tied up here, and uh, for T, close to zero, corresponding fiber, okay. Looks like uh, a section of the normal bundle of X. So let me just elaborate here a bit. So one has the following, you take the tangent bundle of X, right? And you look at the tangent bundle of chi restricted to X and the co-kernel is a normal bundle of x. Uh, a short exact sequence. Okay. So um, we put uh, this to be O x of t of x, and. Uh, so what happens is that you can have, you have this map on an infinitesimal level, you have a map of this to H0 of X. Uh, bundle X. Okay. So you map from here to here. Then you have a connecting homomorphism into H1 of this shape here. This is my that gives us map. Okay. So we're gonna put uh, H1 ouch of x this object here to be my kappa the image of t0 of s. Okay. 
So we have that. So there's another theorem. <coughs> So we assume given <coughs> for general X for general X and uh, <coughs> further assume that uh, Cut product <coughs> this answered H two zero X to H one one transcendental X uh, this rejective. We're going to let uh, C belong to a one decomposable at two X not and the correspondence If C to bar or underscore C is ejected. Okay. And now um, the corollary. Questions? The assumption depends on your choice of the family. Pardon? The assumption with each one else depends on your choice of the smooth family. Oh, yeah, it's going to depend on the choice. But if you take, let's say, uh, Universal family K3 services. Sure, yeah, yeah. Okay, you'll get surjectivity. And you can look at the subfamilies, but given the card rank, you'll also get surjectivity. So it's a corollary. This is the same notation as the theorem. Um, we're going to assume that P log 2 is rejected. Okay. And the correspondence P e or bar is general. And uh, essential idea is essential ingredients. Uh, 
is that K1 in decomposable bracket two X zero is countable. And then you use that accountability uh, argument of bear type to argue that, uh, that the same thing holds. Okay. That's all. Any questions? So we were talking about zero cycles on surfaces here, right? Pardon me? <clears throat> we're talking about zero cycles on surfaces. Yeah. And so uh, on the, the old buffer theorem, yes. what's H2 zero is not zero. Yeah. And uh, mod rational equivalence is infinite. Yeah, Mitchell. that's right. Okay, so somehow, yeah, I didn't know no K theory. So okay. Somehow, um, what all of this adventure is is to try to find some equivalence relations that are less fine. That's right. <laughs> if you will. That's right. Uh, to make some some finite statement. Yeah. yeah. Can you say how this how this fits into that framework? Um, well, first of all, it's the injectivity, the conjecture on the injectivity is really more of an anomaly. We're dealing with the surface, and we just you know anticipate that it's injected by whatever evidence that people thought at the time that, that it's that. In this particular situation of the surface, the analogy is not the same thing as bumper theorem. This is in K1 now. And the, uh, the idea is that this is more of an anomaly because most of the time, when you look at higher K theory and you look at the regulators on those, the kernels are huge, massive. So it's just probably, the analogy I think of it is that you take um, you take k zero of a curve, okay, then you have finite dimensionality, and somehow this next step for k one of the surface somehow seems analogous to that idea. But for the Montfort theorem thing, you have of course a full generalization of that to a higher k theory uh, that I computed in nineteen eighties or something like this. And, uh, but it doesn't pick up beyond, uh, you know, after a surface, everything starts to change completely. Um, perhaps if you look at a, a hypersurface or smooth hypersurface in uh, T4, then the map restricted to the Griffiths group, in fact, maybe not even map, but just the null homologous two cycles, okay? That map should be injective in a Jacobian. And again, that's, you know, that's an anomaly in, I, in my opinion, because it just manages to skirt around Mumford's theorem uh, while being nailed. <laughs> um, but I don't have much intuition beyond that. So what did he say? It breaks down when you look at three poles and things like that. It's a different thing. Pardon me? This doesn't hold for any other than the surfaces. That what you're saying? Somehow surfaces for K1 looks mm -hmm. a little bit like Riemann surfaces for K0. I see. That's how I'm looking at it. I see. It. But, um, I mean, I suppose what one could do, but this will be over Q, I'm trying to work over the integers, is you can tensor with Q and uh, then look at 
a block balance and filtration for the higher K theory, which is over Q. And then show that uh, at F2, which lies in the kernel of the Alba Jacobi map, should be all of the Alba Jacobi map. And that would be zero. So you look at the various projectors from the diagonal class. Um, so there's some evidence there, you know, just by looking more typically as to what's going on. But I don't have much intuition beyond that. Okay, any further questions? So, so suppose I take a deformation and the Picard number goes down. So I have, in some sense, less families oh, I see. of curves. Well, this, this X will have a lower Picard number. Say again? I'm usually concerned about going up. But I mean, if it's going down, OK, that would be typical of a generic, very so, generalized. But if, if the Picard number goes down, should I expect, the, if you will, the zero cycle theory to be more complicated or to to uh, uh, have less opportunity I would for say there it's less to complicated, be rational. Less was, complicated. Um, for, for instance, if you look at, uh, just look at the universal family of K3 services we're given polarization. Um, the higher Picard number goes, the more trickier it is to deal with, but once the Picard reaches maximal rank of 20, we're left with just uh, trying to figure out if the particular regulator is injective on that. There are no tools that I could use because of rigidity. So whenever we can construct a family, then we could use the Qatar Spencer theory. I see. Yeah. Okay, so anything more? Oh, that's okay. We thank the speaker. Thank you. So I guess you maybe the table thing. Everybody that's going to join us for dinner. I don't know if we're going to join us. Is there a dinner? Yeah. You want to count?